Hello, my name is Jacek Żakowicz and uh, today I would like to introduce Optitex Optimator which is a tool that allows for uh, running various tests on digital cinema cameras. It works on the principle of projecting a fine resolution target onto the sensor at a very precise distance um, which allows uh, for one of the tests uh, back focus check on the camera. Uh, you need to do that in order to have your lenses in focus when you during production. Camera, we have uh, uh, Optimator Deluxe model, which um, has this additional feature of micrometer head that's on the back, and it it actually moves the radical or the target in and out and it gives you a readout on the head that indicates how far off the sensor is. Um, the unit was uh, mainly meant for uh, full frame cameras like um, the uh, Sony F35 or Ariflex D21 or Panavision Genesis or um, the red camera like this one here. Uh, we also uh, put a neutral mounting system on the unit that uh, allows not only for PL uh, mount adapters, so for using on PL mounted cameras like this red, or, but also allows for Panavision mount adapters, Nikon or Canon mount adapters. It should be noted that the optics were designed so they clear the flip up mirror on the Canon and Nikon DSLRs, so you can also test those cameras. Uh, we put a few um, features in it that make it easy to use, that make it user friendly. Uh, the unit has an LED backlight, which is which generates a pure white 5600K light, and um, it's uh, the 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 backlight very evenly illuminates uh, the radical, so uh, the corners are as bright as exactly as bright as the center. And also, um, it uses very little current. Uh, current is supplied by batteries that are built in, into the unit. Uh, these are just uh, standard nickel metal hydride batteries. And also, we have a circuitry that has a charging uh, they had the charging system for the battery that's built inside. And the last thing I wanted to mention that is uh, very important to this instrument is that the lens barrel is made out of stainless steel. Uh, the reason for that is that I felt that um, stainless steel provides the thermal stability that is uh, that will allow this instrument to be stable in any temperature and uh, do not change its properties, its back focus, so you can always rely on it for adjusting back focus no matter what temperature, if you're working in a freezing cold or you're working in a, in a, in a you know, hot desert, uh, the unit will always generate the image at the same distance. Basically, you mount the unit on the camera, turn it on, and uh, in case of the red camera, we have an option of punching in the um, image so I'm going to punch it now and I'm looking at the very center of the uh, sensor so the image is big and I can see the back focus changes easily and uh, I'm just going to rack the focus and look for the best line separation both vertical and horizontal and uh, it's here and uh, the unit is at zero the camera is adjusted correctly um, another test that uh, this unit allows you to run is to run the test on centering, on the centration of the sensor. And um, what the, the way to check that is uh, you have to turn on the crosshair on the camera and the crosshair is generated in the center of the sensor while the center dot of the unit is generated in, um, uh, by the lens in the center of the optical path of the lens. Uh, those should be aligned perfectly, but uh, from the experience I know that they never are. And um, the, there, are, there are two rulers on the radical 
a horizontal and vertical rulers that allow you to calculate the error on the centration, both sideways and up and down. And uh, the numbers on the rulers are uh, in 10 lines, it should be multiplied by 10 lines per height. In the case of this radical, each line is about 6 microns. So, uh, and the, the lines are spaced out uh, uh, with the tilt of the sensor. And for that I need to punch out. And now I can see the whole, uh, the whole target. And I'm going to be looking at the um, I'm going to be looking at the corner high resolution target and trying to focus on the uh, diagonally opposite target and see if the focus is different. If it is different, that means there is a tilt in the sensor, and uh, uh, and the micrometer will tell you how much of a tilt that is. And again, you can communicate that to the camera manufacturer, or you can note it and observe if it's drifting or it stays there and, and if it's drifting that means that there's something loose in the camera and needs to be repaired or serviced or whatever the options are at that time. A um, couple of tests we can uh, run to, uh, for self-diagnostics of the optimator just to check if the optimator uh, specs haven't changed. Uh, we can run the centration test by just loosening the neutral mount, rotating the optimator, and uh, uh, looking if the center of the uh, radical, uh, the center of the target, has moved. Uh, if it didn't move, if it stayed in the same place in relation to the crosshair, that means that uh, the uh, the dot, the center dot, is in center of the sensor. Uh, it should be noted here that there is some, uh, there is always some slack or some slap in the lens mount, and that will make it move a little bit. But if it moves within 10 lines, that's perfectly normal. If it moves more, then that could be indication of a problem. And the same spinning test we can perform to uh, check the tilt on the sensor. So basically, if there is one soft corner, if it happens to be, for example, the right upper corner that's soft and you, you loosen the neutral mount, you rotate the unit, now the, unit, the image is upside down, and you observe if the uh, right upper corner is still the softest corner. If it is, that means that the problem is with the sensor. If the right upper corner, after rotating 180 degrees, move to the lower left corner, that means that there could possibly be some tilt issues with the optimator, and that uh, we need to be contacted and, uh, and address that. So these are the self-diagnostic tests that we run on the optimum.